그럼 지금부터 미래 세대 대한 책임의 선한 방식 시작을, 선한 방식 시작을 여러분의 큰, 큰 박수로 시작하겠습니다. 시작하겠습니다. 네, 그럼, 그럼 선한 통화상에 대한, 대한 소개와 수상자가 선정되기까지의 과정을 영상을 통해 준비해봤습니다. 화면을 통해서 확인하시고 영상도 통역기로 통역, 통역 서비스를 받으실 수 있다는 점 말씀드립니다. To begin our official program this morning, please turn your attention to the screen close to you as we watch the introductory video presentation. And also, and also translations, translations are provided for you through the radio during all of the video presentations. What is peace? Our world is becoming one global village, and at the same time, all of us are experiencing vast changes in our daily lives. How do we define peace? And how do we go about obtaining it? As we search to get the answers to this essential question, We may, we may come, come closer, closer to achieving a better life, life for all humanity. humanity. These, These statistics, statistics show how many people around, around the world live in desperate, desperate situations. situations. Although, Although many enjoy a better life than, than ever before, before, we still, still live, live in fear of, of the future. future. Change. 
Fortunately, many are aware of the crisis and are raising awareness about the seriousness of the climate crisis. Today, as the survival of mankind itself is being threatened, we must seek for a way to live in harmony with the natural world. Focused on climate change and the food crisis. And selected his excellency, Anatole Tetron, the former president of Kiribati, for his struggles to address the climate crisis. And Dr. Mumodudu Ugupta, a leading fisheries scientist from India, whose innovative work in agriculture technology helps spawn the Blue Revolution. Next is the entrance of the Sonar Peace Prize founder and committee chairman. Founder Dr. Hata Hamu and committee chairman Dr. Isiko will make their entrance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome them with a warm round of applause. 한학자 총재님과 홍일식 위원장님께서 입장을 하고 계십니다. 여러분 정작 큰 박수로 환영을 해주십시오. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. h 
하나님께서는 오늘 제 예배를 맞이하는 선한 평화상의 설립자로 두 분이신 고 문선명 총재와 함께 세계를 무대로 평화와 참 사랑의 이상을 이루기 위해 헌신적인 삶을 살아오셨습니다. Now the founders of the Sona Peace Prize being awarded for the second time, Dr. Hak j a h a n m o o n and the late Reverend Dr. Sun m y o n g m o o n have devoted their lives for the promotion of their ideals of peace and true love on the world stage. 네. 자 이제 오늘 행사의 주인공 만나보실 순서입니다. 진호 스트라다 박사와 사키나 야쿠비 박사가 입장하겠습니다. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please remain standing as it is time to welcome the honorees of today's program. Please welcome Dr. Gino Strada and Dr. Sakina Yuki. 남미과 전쟁 희생자들의 치료받을 권리를 지켜낸 영웅 진호 스트라다 박사와 난민 재정책의 근본 해법을 제시한 난민 교육의 어머니 사키나 야쿠비 박사입니다. Dr. Gino Strada being awarded for championing the right to medical care of refugees and war victims, and Dr. Sakina Yuki, the mother of refugee education, for her devotion in proposing a fundamental solution for refugee settlement. 네. 자, 여러분의 기립박수 속에서 오늘의 두 주인공께서 입장을 하셨습니다. 여러분 다시 한번 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Please join us in congratulating both our 2017 awardees with a big round of applause. 네. 고맙습니다. 여러분 모두 자리에 앉아 주십시오. Thank you very much. We all seated. 이어서 홍일식 위원장의 환영사를 듣는 순서입니다. Next, I would like to invite Chairman Dr. i s h i k o of the s o n a Peace Prize Committee to give his welcoming address. 위원장님께서는 한국을 대표하는 인문학자로서 고려대 총장을 역임하셨고 세계 효문화본부의 총재를 맡고 계십니다. 오늘 시상식이기까지 s o n a 평화상을 이끌어 오셨습니다. As Korea's foremost scholar in the humanities, he has served as president of Korea University, and he is currently the president of the World Filial Piety Culture Headquarters, and he has guided the Sona Peace Prize Committee until this day. 네, 환영사를 청해 드리겠습니다. 김용한은 내외 비빔 여러분, 오늘 제 2회 현아 평화상 시상식을 축하하기 위해. 이처럼 상황을 이루어 주신 데 대해서 진심으로 감사를 드립니다. 특별히 제게 각국에서 찾아주신 각계의 대표 및전 현직 국가 수반 그리고 의회 의원 여러분과 이렇게 자리를 함께하게 되어 더욱 기쁘게 생각합니다. 특히 설립자이신 한학자 총재님을 직접 모시고 시상식을 가지게 되어 이 자리가 더욱 값지게 느껴집니다. 무엇보다도 먼저 저는 인류의 평화를 위해 헌신적인 노력과 업적으로 제2회 전화평화상을 수상하시게 된 오늘의 주인공 진호 스트라다 박사님과 사키나 야쿠비 박사님께 깊은 존경과 축하의 뜻을 전하고자 합니다. 진아 스트라다 박사님, 자키나 야쿠베 박사님 축하드립니다. 선학평화상은 <웃음> 고 문선명 총재님의 사상과 업적을 기리고 그 유지를 선양하기 위해 동 영부인이신 한학자 총재님의 제안으로 제정되었습니다. 익히 아실 줄 믿습니다만 문선명 총재님과 한학자 총재님은 일찍부터 모든 인류는 한 가족이라는 공생, 공영, 공의의 신념으로 범인류 공동체 건설에 평생을 바쳐오신 분입니다. 특히 세계 평화를 위해서는 인종과 국경과 사상과 종교를 초월해서 범 인류에 기본한 평화 문명이 절실하다고 강조하시며 
일생 동안 북경 철폐 운동을 전개해 오셨습니다. 설립자의 이러한 선견처럼 오늘날 세계는 국경의 당을 낮추고 이웃처럼 서로 가까워져 가고 있습니다. 일찍이 저 역시 모든 나라들은 영토, 즉 땅이 아니라 문화를 통해 가까워져야 한다는 소위 문화영토론을 학계에 제기한 바가 있습니다. 그러나 최근 국제사회는 기록적인 수준의 글로벌 난민 위기에 대처하는 수단으로 국경의 담을 더 높게 쌓아 올리고 있습니다. 전쟁과 테러와 굶주림을 피해 죽음의 바다를 건너 타국 땅으로 들어가려는 난민들은 강력한 난민 수용 반대라는 현실 앞에 또다시 크게 절망하고 있습니다. <웃음> 존경하는 비빈 여러분 이런 난민 문제는 비단 오늘의 현상에 국한되는 것이 아니라 문명사적 큰 흐름에서 접근하고 이해되어야 할 것입니다 본래 디아스포라는 인류의 가장 오래된 관행이요 생존 전략이었습니다 따라서 장차는 더욱 중요한 평화와 문화교류의 이슈로 부각되어 갈 것은 틀림없습니다. 본 위원회는 국제사회가 난민 위기의 해결책을 마련함에 있어 인도주의, 즉 도덕성을 최우선의 가치로 삼기를 기대하는 뜻에서 이번에 위의 두 분을 수상자로 선정하게 된 것입니다. 21세기의 국제질서는 결코 강대국들의 영향권을 확대하려는 다툼이 되어서는 안 되겠습니다. 반드시 약소국들과 어려운 처지에 있는 사람들에게 유익한 방향으로 개편되어 가야만 합니다. 정의가 지배하는 평화의 바탕 위에 민주주의와 인권이 존중받는 세계가 되어야만 하겠습니다. 본상의 설립자가 평생 강조했듯이 전 인류가 마음속의 장벽과 국경을 철폐하고 다같이 뜨거운 인류애를 나눌 때 21세기는 평화의 낙원이 될 것입니다. 오늘의 두 부분 주인공인 진호 스트라다 박사와 사키나 야쿠비 박사는 인도주의의 실천을 통해 난민 문제 해결에 가장 기초적이고도 근본적인 방향을 제시했습니다. 세계가 평화로운 공동체가 되기 위해서는 이 지구상에 의료권과 보육권에서 소외되는 사람이 없어야만 하겠습니다. 21세기는 힘의 논리에 기초한 질서, 즉 반목과 대립과 갈등을 극복하고 범인류에 기초한 평화와 화해, 화해와 협력의 공동체로 자리매김해야만 합니다. 선악평화상은 인류는 한가족, 미래는 미래를 위한 평화상이라는 기치 아래 온 인류를 가족처럼 사랑하며 세계 평화를 빚어내는 용기 있는 의인들을 계속 발굴해 나갈 것입니다. 끝으로 이 자리에 참석해 주신 내외 귀빈 여러분께 다시 한번 깊은 감사를 드리면서 여러분과 여러분 가정의 건강과 합평만이 함께 하시기를 기원 드립니다. 고맙습니다. 네, 감사합니다. 선악평화상위원회 홍일식 위원장님의 환영의 말씀 청해 들었습니다. Thank you, Chairman Hong, for that lovely speech. 네, 이제 시상의 순서입니다. 시상은 업적 영상을 보시고 메달과 상패를 수여하고 소감을 듣는 순서로 진행하겠습니다. Now at this time, we would like to move on to our main event of the morning program. For each laureate, we will begin by watching a short clip of their work, followed by a medal and plaque presentation, and ending with a speech by the laureate. 네, 그럼 먼저 진호 스트라다 박사의 업적을 영상을 통해서 보시겠습니다.
Firstly, I would like to draw your attention to the screen for a video presentation about our first laureate, Dr. Gino Strada. Let's take a look at his achievements. This is where Dr. Gino Strada has been spending his waking hours for the past 28 years. Confronting the tragedies of the world, the doctor has devoted all his energy and time. Beginning in 1988 with the outbreak of the war in Afghanistan, and during 1994 Rwandan Civil War, he established an international medical relief organization. To convey a sense of urgency, he named it a emergency. If we define that he will rise and that every human being, simply by the fact that he or she is alive, should have the same rights. And the same rights means that you can get the same class A, class B, class C, and next to the name of people who are more or less in the position. Dr. Gino Strada has been spending his waking hours for the past 
It is an honor for me to receive the Sunak Peace Prize, particularly in time increasingly marked by war and violence, and in times when speaking of peace is perceived as unrealistic and utopian. I wish to thank Reverend Sung Yung Mon and Dr. Ak Yap Mon for devoting their lives to achieving universal peace and promoting fundamental values of peace, dialogue, and cooperation in the name of the human family. Now, now more than ever, there is a compelling need for building a better world for future generations sustainable peace. I have personally seen the atrocities of war and its devastating effects. I have spent the last 30 years of my life in war-torn countries, operating on patients in Rwanda, Peru, Ethiopia, Somalia, Cambodia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Sudan. In these and other countries, emergency the humanitarian organization I founded 23 years ago is committed to providing free and high-quality medical and surgical care to the victims of war, whose effects are not limited to the wounded and refugees, but have several repercussions on the future of entire generations. Many of the conflicts that are currently ravaging countries, reducing population to misery and hunger, are often undeclared or deliberately silenced. The massacres are increasing to the point that it is hard to remember them all. For most of us, they seem so far an alien from our daily life. It is easy to listen to the news without realizing that after every bomb, after every shell, there are people struggling to survive. Ninety percent of the victims of the wars of our time are civilians, people equal to us, with the same needs, the same hopes, and the same desire for their beloved ones, living safely, staying together, and being protected. According to recent estimates, eight individuals own as much as the poorest 3.6 billion people. Meanwhile, Every day, one in nine people go to bed hungry. We are still surprised that people increasingly embark on a perilous journey and strive to find a better future. Last year, over 60 million people were forced to leave their homes, looking for protection and safety. They had the dream of living in peace, but we are deaf 
to their hopes. What did I do wrong? A Somali guy landed and insistently asked me. I could not give him an answer. Even though migrants arriving in Europe represent a small portion of the migrant population scattered across the globe, the so-called migration crisis has shed light on the hypocrisy of the European approach to the human rights. On the one hand, we firmly promote the principles of peace, democracy, and fundamental rights, while on the other, we are building a fortress made of walls and cultural barriers, denying access and basic help to thousands of people fleeing war and poverty. The case of Afghanistan serves as an emblematic example. In the last 15 years, Afghanistan has been devastated by a new war. Every year in our hospitals around the country, we register a new record of war wounded. One third of them are children. Afghanistan has been the second source of country of the refugees worldwide, only recently surpassed by Syria with almost 3 million Afghans living mainly in Pakistan and Iran. This tragedy has been ignored for many years by the Western countries and has become a priority only when Afghan refugees have turned to Europe as their final destination. In response to this increasing flow, rather than investing in welcoming and integration and addressing the root causes of the conflict, European leaders have signed an agreement with the Afghan government to legally deport asylum seekers back to Afghanistan in exchange for financial aid. The broken lives of all of them urges us to reflect, ask us to take action to get out of the spiral of war and violence. If we wish to work for the survival of mankind, humankind, the abolition of war is necessary and inevitable. It falls within the mandate of the UN, founded over 70 years ago, but still today, very little has been done to fulfill the core mandate. Emergency has come to believe that the abolition of war is the only realistic and human solution to end human suffering and promote universal human rights. With this objective in mind, Emergency is working to launch an international campaign involving world-renowned personalities as well as ordinary citizens. It might sound utopian, but in fact, it is realistic and it is an achievable objective. It is up to the world citizens to take action and conquer peace. Renouncing the logic of war and practicing fraternity and solidarity is not only desirable, but urgently needed if we want the human experiment to continue. Today, I'm very happy to have the chance to warmly invite all of you to join in this effort. Thank you. Thank you for those precious words. Next up, we turn to the award presentation of our co-recipient, Dr. Sakina Yakubi of Afghanistan. First, let's take a look at her achievements through a video presentation. Located in the heart of Central Asia, Afghanistan is called the crossroads between the East and West. But through decades of war, it has the lowest world peace index in the world and has become the world's poorest country. Explosive conflicts shook the country. 
beginning in 1979, the tragic chain of wars has lasted over 30 years. Afghan women hold the highest female illiteracy rate in the world. Having to accept violence and abuse as their destiny, they are forced into a life of misery. Education was absolutely essential if they were to overcome this tragic situation. Dr. Yukubi was convinced that education is a human right, and that only education can offer a brighter future for refugees. If anything that I want to really trust for this society is not going to be through gun or through um, a tank, it's going to be through pen and through books and through education. Those who survived the war were in denial of the value of education and did not trust teachers. And the traditional local culture opposed to women's education. Rural communities are being transformed through education. 
You have to get the Digital Learning, learning is offering training, training that meets the needs of the community. Consulting with the local authorities throughout the process, they have created positive social reforms that came about because of these educational projects. In addition to education, Dr. Yakumi introduced a holistic approach to improve the overall quality of life for many, providing training in medical care and broadcasting. Radio stations provide educational content to people living in remote areas. In the near future, she also plans to establish a TV station and a women's university. These efforts are giving hope to countless refugees. Due to her pioneering efforts, and unlike the first generation of Afghan refugees who suffered from despair and poverty, Many second and third generation refugees have flourished as leaders in rebuilding their community and creating a better future. Tana Peace Prize founder, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, and the committee chairman, Dr. Il Shik Hong, now move to the center stage once again to present Dr. Zakiri Yakubi with the Tana Peace Prize medal and plaque. I really appreciate to be here and it's the greatest honor to accept this 
greatest award. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate that. Let us not forget the same hope price that it was uh, given by Dr. Hak Jang Moon. The purpose of this prize really is to, re to remember Dr. Sang Hong Moon's uh, philosophy, ideology of peace. Dr. Revan Sang Moon, his um, uh, ideology was that we are one global family under God. And that is true. That is true. As you see the world that today we are living, and the way that the people are being created in the world, it's unbelievable. As you saw what Dr. Gino Strader showed to you, I have been living in that country. I have been a refugee in Afghanistan. My family have been a refugee. I know how the refugee feels. I know how the refugee uh, lost everything that they had. I know how the refugee lost their family, their brother and sister, their father, their mother, and also as a family, as an individual, they lost their dignity, they lost their resilience. And above all, education was prohibited for the refugee. So, again, Reverend Sang Hong Moon was really giving us this opportunity to look, look the conflict resolution, look why all these people are leaving their home. Nobody wants to leave their home. Everybody loves their nation, loves their country. But when we go over, these people are forced to leave. Why I am talking today about this issue? Today the world is pinpointing the refugee. The refugee who lost everything, they try to make the effort to go to another part of the world, to make a home for themselves. But today, the world is not accepting it. They send him back to Afghanistan. I am talking about Afghanistan. They are all many of refugees are returning back home. They lost everything. Home is not ready for them. Afghanistan are suffering, suffering poverty. Afghanistan is suffering economical issue. Still in Afghanistan, we have war. Every single day in Afghanistan, there is a village, there is a home, there is a place that is blown up with the air. Yes, we create an environment that people are learning. We create an environment that right now they can learn. But is that enough? I don't think so. Why we are educating the civil society? Because we want them to really get their dignity back, take their confidence back, take their respect back. People in Afghanistan or any other conflict zone, they are human beings like every, any other person. They need help because they lost everything. They lost country, they lost institution, they lost whatever they own. We have to start from scratch. Through the video you saw, there were education grants for women and children. There were thousands and thousands of children and women who were sitting in the refugee camp desperate. They did not know what to do. Yes, we create an environment that they could get education. Is that enough? I don't think so. 
Today, we are facing in the world that everyone is really looking to the refugee and with different lens. But they are equal to us. We are all human beings, and God sees us as the same individual. And we, who are we, that we don't look that. I think the world should wake up. If today is Afghanistan or Syria or Iraq, tomorrow is there another part of the world. Because the hitters are there. The people who have hit, they are really destroying other nations. And the only way that we can demolish that hit and that prejudice is through education. Education is the key issue that really helps people to see the reality of life, to see the reality of nature, to see the reality of individual. We need to really educate. What type of education? Education that teaches wisdom. Education that teaches love. Education that teaches dignity. Education that teaches responsibility. Education that really teaches us that we cooperate and coordinate with each other. Education that it will help us to really get rid of poverty. Why we have war? Because people are suffering all around the world. When people suffer, there is war. If there is enough economic situation for everybody, then there wouldn't be any war. So we are trying to educate people to defend their rights. Human right is the right of every individual. They have a right for education, they have a right for health, and they have a right for economic empowerment. So we are empowering women to have a sustainable life. And that's what we are doing in education. Education is a tool that it makes people life easier. And when we give them that tool, we don't have to feel pity for them. We don't have to feel sorry for them. They stand up on their own. They will be empowered. They will get education. They will run business. They will interact with each other. They reach for each other because they know that prejudice is not a way of life. So I am a great, and a great honor to accept this award, this prestigious award, but I would like to dedicate this award to the people of Afghanistan, especially to the women of Afghanistan, to the children of Afghanistan. And, and I, I would, would like, like to thank, thank Dr. Hai Chan Moon for, for this wonderful, wonderful initiative. Thank you. Thank you. And above and all, I, I would like to dedicate this award to my father, father who was, was a great man, man, who was, was a man that really Give me the opportunity to get education that today I can share with the world. Thank you very, very much. Thank you 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 very much. All of humanity came together, together in love, compassion, and, and wisdom, wisdom, we would be able to coexist peacefully and harmoniously. 네, 이제 한학자 정대님과 홍일식 위원장님 그리고 영광의 수상자 두 분께서 함께 기념 촬영을 하시겠습니다. Now a commemorative photo will be taken with founder Dr. Hassan Mood.
committee chairman, Dr. Ishii Kong, and both co-recipients of this year's Tona Peace Prize Award. 선하나 동화상의 영광으로 메달과 승패를 들고 오늘 이 자리에 의미를 더욱 빛내고 있는 영예 수상자들입니다. Their lives of service to others for the sake of present and future generations are exemplary and entirely consistent with the vision and values of the 선하 Peace Prize Award. 자 이렇게 해서 3년 탈락을 함께 하셨습니다. 자 총장님과 위원장님 그리고 두분 수상자께서는 안내에 따라서 이제 무대 아래에 준비되어 있는 자리로 이동하시겠습니다. Now at this time we would like founder h a k a h a m u n and committee chairman Dr. i s h i k o as well as the two laureates of the 2017 t o n a Peace Prize Award to be escorted to their designated seats. 네. 자, 하나차 정재님과 홍유식 위원장님 그리고 영광스러운 두 분의 수상자들을 무대에서 만나 보셨습니다. 자, 이제 이 뜻깊은 자리를 축하해 주기 위해서 참석해 주신 아주 특별한 분이 계셔서 다시 한번 소개를 해 드리겠습니다. 바로 1회 선악통화상의 주인공인 아노테통 키리바시 전 대통령이십니다. Continuing on to celebrate this meaningful event, we have together with us today a very special person, and it is none other than the winner of the inaugural t o n a k i s Prize himself, former president of Kiribati, His Excellency Anatoly. 국제사회 기후 변화의 심각성을 공론화하고 있는 글로벌 리더입니다. Now, Dr. Tong is a global leader in advocating the importance of climate change to the international community and in protecting the rainy system. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please give him a warm round of applause. Thank you, our MC, for this morning. Traditionally, In Kiribati, before we begin any ceremony, we bless each other. So let me bless you this morning before we begin. And uh, what I will say is, I will say, Mau. And I will invite you to bless me back by saying, Mau. So let me begin. Mau. Thank you. Having blessed each other. Let me begin by reflecting back on the events of yesterday. Yesterday, we had the wonderful pleasure of celebrating birthdays of the most wonderful people that I know. Founders of this wonderful vision of peace for all. A vision that has reached the far corners of the world, even In our, our tiny, tiny islands, islands in right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, Ocean we quite often think, think that, that nobody knows that we exist, let alone the river We have, have been, been so isolated, isolated that, that we have believed that the globalization, whatever events, whether it be trade, have no impact. But, but we have learned quite recently that, that climate change as a global phenomenon We are not immune from the effects of climate change. Let me begin by expressing our deepest gratitude to the founders of this vision, the Reverend Wood and Mrs. Wood, for this wonderful vision of which we all become a part. Yesterday, we also celebrated the establishment of the International Association of Parliamentarians. Today, we are celebrating the Sanak Peace Prize. Yet, another instrument of peace that's, that these two people are responsible for. So let me acknowledge, pay tribute to the contribution of these two wonderful people. Next, Next, I want to pay tribute to the, to the committee, committee, the chairman of the committee of, of the Senate. 
I know that it is never an easy task to select. We know that every day we are making decisions, a daily basis. And I think, what did they go through in trying to make this decision? Was it so easy? I believe not. Because today we all are these wonderful people. Two most outstanding, outstanding people for their achievements. We've seen on the video what they have done. Many people have felt directly the result of their work. But let me ask each one of you. Because, because I, I believe, believe in, in our daily lives, lives we're, we're always making decisions. Because, because whether, whether you believe it or not, whether you wish to acknowledge or not, within each and every one of us, there is more to do it. And there is also the other side of it. And this is the struggle. This, this is, is the battle, battle that we all go through on a daily basis. Every, Every moment in the battle, we, we have to make a decision. Is this is the, the right thing? thing? Are we Are doing, doing the right thing? thing? Should, Should we, we remain, remain silent, silent when somebody is doing the wrong thing next to us? Should, Should we, we allow those nations to be deciding in the boardrooms, Europe, Europe, in the other side, side of the world, world what, what should be out of the, the war torn in In the vulnerable countries, to climate change. And the answer is no. And so, so these, these are the are decisions, decisions that, that have to make. This, this is the battle, whether, whether we like it or not. We're, we're always making those decisions on a daily basis. The fact, fact that, that we're, we're all here today is testament to the fact, the fact that we believe in peace. peace. We believe in security. security. We believe that, that people, people should have a future. future. That people have the right to medical treatment. That, that people have the right to education. That, that, that women must have access to education. Women, women must be given as much opportunity as anybody else. And so, in acknowledging the award that I received in 2015, as you know, one of the recipients. The award. award. There, there was, was always this question, question, and I want, I want to, to share this with my friends, friends who have just received the award because I don't know if you're going through the same process. process. But when, when I received the award in 2015, 2015 I always asked myself the question before and after and until, and until today, today, what did I really do that I do deserve this highly prestigious? And it, it, if anything, it, it made, made me even, even more humble. And it, and it drove, drove me, me to try to do more, more. So, so that, that I can believe and convince myself that I did deserve this prize. And, and the reason is, this, as, as I, I sit, sit and watch, look at a number of people sitting around, around. I, can I can see, see so many people, people who likewise deserve prizes like, like what we are witnessing today. today. But, but unfortunately, the reality is they're not, not as, as many, many prices to but, but my point is, each and every one of us, in our own way, deserves an award and a prize. Let, Let today, as we witness the outstanding performance, we have some of these two outstanding individuals. Let this be an a source of inspiration for all of us. I heard Dr. Strada say, Maybe, Maybe I should, I should quit. quit. And I, I believe, believe we all go through, through that process. Maybe, Maybe we, we have done enough. Maybe we're, we're too tired. tired. We, we cannot, cannot carry on. But, but I, believe I believe the struggle, the struggle must, must carry, carry on. on. I believe and that if we are able, able to carry, carry on the struggle, struggle, I always I say we have, have the obligation to carry on the struggle. And all the other that I've taken, taken over the last decade, decade or so on the issue of climate, climate change, change, I've always categorized climate change as the most significant moral challenge for humanity. And the reason is we're not fighting a war with anybody else. 
We are fighting a war against ourselves. Against our own greed. Against our own desire. So when will enough be? Yesterday we were heard. Our world, the world of this world is so miserable. Day after start, make a simple point. We continue to ask. When will that distribution be fair? When will justice be fair? So today, it's indeed my greatest honor to make these remarks, to acknowledge the wonderful achievements of these two individuals. At the same time, let me also congratulate you, all of you, who this morning made a wonderful decision, who after the ceremony will make wonderful decisions, will, 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 which will contribute to improving the lives of people. Your own, for instance, we, I hear people, people talking about peace, being at home. But let me add that peace starts, starts from within yourself. yourself. Only, Only when you can, can achieve peace within yourself, yourself can you can pass, pass it on to inspire us. So, so let today's, today's event be the chat. Let, let today's event be the inspiration. Which, which will continue, continue which, which will drive us to struggle, to continue, continue the battle, to achieve what I heard people were saying yesterday, sometimes, sometimes being impossible. impossible. I agree with the, the comments being made. Nothing is impossible. They don't, they don't hear you. you. Keep, Keep talking. talking. But I can, I can guarantee, guarantee you, nobody will hear those who do not speak. Once, Once again, again it is, this is it, my pleasure. Comment, congratulate our two award winners, and let us draw inspiration from their work. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it, my pleasure to make these comments. But before I can, I must ask us all again to pay tribute to the contribution of Reverend Moon, Dr. Tatan, what they have done. But well, where that continues to reverberate the world. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. 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 Thank to commemorate this special occasion, we have a very special treat in store for you today. 네, 네, 오늘 공연 특별히 뮤지컬 음악 감독인 박칼린 씨가 총 감독을 맡아서 연출했습니다. 박칼린 감독과 뮤지컬 배우 최재림 씨 그리고 노래하는 작은 천사 한국의 민간 외교 사절단이라고 불리는 리틀 엔젤스가 여러분을 위한 멋진 무대를 준비했습니다. Today's performance has been specially choreographed by the renowned musical director Miss Colleen Park, who is here with us today, along with musical artist and actor Mr. Terim Choi. And, and the, the children's, children's choir, choir with angel-like angel -like voices, voices uh, often referred to as Korea's best diplomatic corps, the Little Angels. 아 그리고 특별히 이번 시상이 글로벌 난민 위기에 주목했기 때문에 축하 공연도 분쟁과 박해로 자신의 집을 떠나야 했던 난민들의 삶을 위로하고 공감하기 위한 곡들로 준비했습니다. As the crisis focus this year is on the global refugee crisis. The congratulatory performance features songs of comfort and encouragement for the refugees who had to leave their homes due to conflict and persecution. 네, 그럼 의미 있는 축하 무대를 여러분의 큰 박수로 청해 보겠습니다. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with a warm round of applause.
네, 여러분 다시 한번 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Little Angels. 네. 자, 우리 노래하는 작은 천사 리틀 앤젤스가 마지막 무대를 꾸며주었고요. 그리고 어, 뮤지컬 음악 감독 박할린 씨, 그리고 뮤지컬 배우 최재림 씨와 함께 멋진 무대를 만들어 주었습니다. And also please give another big hand for the Little Angels as well as Mr. Teddy c h e and Ms. c l e e Park. 자 이렇게 멋진 축하 무대를 끝으로 미래 세대를 위한 평화상 제2회 선화 평화상 시상식의 공식 순서를 모두 마치겠습니다. Now this will conclude the 2017 Sona Peace Prize Award ceremony, making the world better for future generations.